Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Like, Comment, and Romance. This will be Part 7, Chapter 7, entitled They Drink Beverages This Chapter, relieving all of the readers who have been expressing concern over how thirsty they are. Todoroki Shoto, the current number six hero in Japan, was texting a boy. No, not a boy. The boy. The funniest, smartest, kindest, cutest, most beautiful boy in the world. He and Bakugo had been duly awarded the Amateur Hero of the Year Award before they graduated high school. They were first in the awards history to do so, and he'd always felt like that was a pretty grand accomplishment. He and Bakugo, along with Togeda, had played a huge role in stopping what was almost a hostile takeover of the entire world. But getting Midori Izuku's number, that was on a different level. He was grateful to Shinso for not only suggesting they go to the movies, but for letting him and Uraraka pick the day. He wasn't sure if he would have had the nerve to text Midoriya unprompted, but texting him with a specific goal in mind, setting up a date and time, was easy, and from there things just flowed naturally. They had gotten soba five days ago, and he and Midoriya had texted each other every day since. He had also texted All Might back. Apparently Togata had been the one to introduce him to Midoriya's analysis videos. He only watched the ones Togata sent him, which, from what he could gather, were most of the All Might videos, which granted was a lot, if the non-costume videos were included and the Lemillion analysis. He also learned that Hato was in the midst of getting a costume license, and the two of them, Hato and Togata, were persistently hounding Amajiki to release a costume as well. Midoriya was distraught that Togata was watching his videos, too, but the knowledge that a Najiri-chan costume was in the works was somewhat of a soothing balm. He'd been so happy to have an inside scoop that Todoroki ended up texting his friends in the group chat asking if any of them were releasing costumes anytime soon. He got teased pretty mercilessly, but he gained the knowledge that Kaminari was talking to a few companies, trying to decide between them. Midoriya had been ecstatic when he told him, and that was all that mattered. He was trying to help him get used to the idea that pro heroes were watching his videos and enjoying them. Midoriya made a comment, sort of implying that the pros could be watching his videos for a laugh because they thought he was dumb. He immediately sent a second text, claiming he was joking, but Todoroki wanted to make sure he knew that there was no truth behind what he'd said. He ended up asking All Might what he liked about Deku's videos. The response was longer than he anticipated. He took a screenshot of it and sent it to Midoriya. And about a minute later, got a text from Shinso scolding him for making him cry. He called to apologize, and they ended up talking for two hours. He wasn't in love. He wasn't that naive to think love could build that quickly. He was in something, though. Not love, but something. He was excited to go to the movies together, but he was also kind of hoping the next time they got together, it could be just the two of them. He wanted to take Midori on a date. He wanted to talk to him and learn more about him and try to make him laugh, and he wanted to hold his hand and walk him to the door and kiss him goodbye and then go home and immediately start planning a second date and then a third and a fourth. He wanted to hold him and whisper to him everything he was feeling and find out if Midori had anything to whisper back. Uraraka told him, as she watched him watching Midori's new video on Mirko for the second time, and what a video it was, that he was so far gone. He agreed and told her he had no desire to return. She made a squealing sound and smacked him in the head, scolding him for embarrassing her with his blunt sincerity. They were about to leave to meet up with Midori and Shinso. Todoroki had changed his outfit three times, but he felt pretty confident about his final decision. He settled on a simple pair of black jeans, and after getting some goading from Uraraka, a fitted blue short sleeve shirt that Yayorozu had given him a while back, he never wore it, namely because he didn't think it fit, it was about an inch too short, and the fit, particularly in the sleeves, was tighter than all of his other t-shirts. Yayorozu claimed it was supposed to be like that, that the tight sleeves and the inch of his stomach on display were the whole point of the thing, but he didn't really like it. The sleeves weren't really a bother. They were tight, but not restrictively so. But the feeling of the shirt's hem against his abdomen was odd, and he felt sort of silly wearing a shirt that was too short. Uraraka said he looked nice, though, and she pointed out that Midoriya might feel self-conscious knowing they'd watched videos of him where he had so much more of his bare skin on display than just an inch of torso. She reasoned that seeing Todoroki bearing a little more than usual might put him at ease. The logic more or less made sense to him. If wearing a too short shirt made Midoriya feel less self-conscious around him, then he'd gladly put up with it. Once he actually saw Midoriya's deer in headlights expression, though, and listened to him stutter out a greeting as he quickly averted his gaze, he started to suspect that maybe Uraraka had tricked him. This suspicion was confirmed when Shinso looked him up and down, glanced at Uraraka, then flicked his gaze back to Todoroki, one eyebrow raised. Next time he wanted fashion advice, he'd asked Yayorozu. No, wait. She bought the shirt in the first place. 
He'd ask Saro, maybe. Or Nissan. Fuck, right. Why didn't he think to ask Fuyumi? Nice shirt, Todoroki. You look fashionable. Todoroki glared at him. It was a gift from Momo. Blue really brings out the bigness of his chest, doesn't it, Dekakun? Uraraka asked as she patted his chest. He swatted her away. Y yeah Midori said, to the ground. He snapped his head up, suddenly, looking at Uraraka. I mean, no. Or, it's not that it's not, um... He glanced at Todoroki's chest, gaze lingering for a second, before he swallowed heavily and lowered his eyes back down to the ground. I'm sure the color doesn't matter. You look nice, though, Shotokun. Hmm. Maybe it wasn't such a bad shirt after all. Thanks. You do, too. Midori's outfit looked much better than his, he thought. It was normal. Or mostly normal, his shirt, which was a bright yellow that brought out his eyes, said halter top across the front. Todoroki didn't know what a halter top was, but the shirt looked like an ordinary t-shirt as far as he could tell. He had a green short sleeve button up over top of it with the front open and had paired the tops with simple khaki shorts. It was a sort of bright and summery outfit. It was a cute look. Thank you, he said quietly. He gave Todoroki a small smile and didn't look away when their eyes met. Uraraka cleared her throat loudly. When neither of them looked at her, she did it again, more loudly. Once she had their attention, she swept her hand down the length of her body. Uh, oh, um, you also look nice, Uref, I mean, um, Uraraka-san. Your outfits always look cute. Thank you, Deku-kun. You're so sweet. You can call me Ochako, by the way. Um, and you, Shinso Nichan, she said, eyeing Shinso up and down. You look like a hobo. Thanks. We should go shopping together sometime. Boy, doesn't that sound fun. I think so, Midori said. Uraraka-san is so nice, and she's really fashionable. I'm sure she'd help you pick out really cool stuff, Hitonian. Deku-kun, you're wonderful. I hope Kanchan is right about his projected timeline. Huh? Kanchan? Ignore her, Todoroki ground out, glaring at his roommate. Just one month, she sang, dodging when he reached down to cover her mouth. If Deku-kun keeps being so sweet, maybe I'll be in his party instead of yours. I'm not hosting a party. Todoroki grabbed her haraka by the waist, yanking her toward him and slapping a hand over her mouth. Please don't listen to her. Bakuga was being an ass and she's just trying to tease me about ew. He let go of her, running his hand against his pant to get her saliva off his palm. She stuck her tongue out at him and suddenly turned to Shinso and looped her arm around his. Come on, let's get inside. We're going to miss the previews, she said as she pulled Shinso toward the door. Todoroki and Midoriya followed behind as they entered the theater. Shoto already bought all of our tickets. How about you two go and find our seats and Nichan and I will get snacks? Huh? You already? Let me pay you back, Midoriya said in a fluster, reaching for his wallet. It's fine, Todoroki said. I figured it'd be safest to buy them in advance. The movie is still new, so I didn't want to risk the show being sold out. Well, yeah, that's smart. I... Thank you, but still, let me pay you back. It's fine, he repeated. If it bothers you, you can just pay next time. Midori immediately began to turn red. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. Next time I will. He felt the side of his mouth twitching up as he watched him. He placed a hand against his back. Let's go find our seats. Ochako, you don't have to get me anything. I know what you want, Shinzo said to Midori as he made a shooing gesture toward him. Go find our seats. Just tell the ticket person a ravity and a friend will be by so we can get in without a hassle. Okay, thanks. See you inside. As they started walking, Todoroki moved his hand off Midori's back, but only so he could drape his arm over his shoulder. They got through the line to have their tickets checked and all the way to their seats before he realized what he'd done. Sorry, he said as he released him. It's fine, Midori said softly. No one has ever put their arm around my shoulders before. It was nice. I didn't mind it, I mean. That surprises me, he said as they sat down, taking the center seats of their reserved area. I feel like you're the perfect height for that sort of thing, at least for me, or a person of similar height to me. What the hell was he even saying? Midoriya laughed breathlessly. Maybe being short is good for something after all. I prefer short guys, he blurted out, flushing the second the words were out. Not that my preferences matter. I was just saying, short is cute, I think, and the shoulder height thing is nice. Midoriya ducked his head down, smiling down at his lap. So maybe being short is good for two things, then. At least. He agreed, recognizing as the words left his mouth that it was a dumb thing to say. Thankfully, Midori didn't seem to mind. 
They chatted idly. Through the general advertisements, neither of them had looked into the movie, Midoriya because he wanted to go in without any preconceived expectations, beyond what he already knew about the studio and the director, and Todoroki because watching trailers and reading reviews wasn't something he did, so they mostly talked about other types of movies they liked. Midori's interests were broad. He liked horror, particularly zombie flicks, but he also liked sci-fi, documentaries, and action films. Todoroki himself watched documentaries more than anything, due to his sheltered upbringing. He thought some of the things regular people did were odd. Learning about people who were considered odd by normal standards was downright fascinating to him. They talked about some of their favorite documentaries and agreed to watch each other's top suggestions. Once the preview started, Midoriya glanced nervously back at the entrance. Hitoshi and aravity san are taking a long time. Todoroki had almost forgotten about them. He didn't feel guilty about it, though. I'm sure they're fine. Ochako gets distracted easily. If they aren't here by the time the previews are done, we can go look for them if you want. Midori made a noise of agreement, nodding slightly as he turned back toward the screen. During what ended up being the last preview, Uraraka showed up, kneeling down out of the way once she reached them. Hey, she whispered. Where's Hitonian? Midori whispered back. Uraraka was kneeling by Todoroki and Midori leaned across him to get closer to her resting a hand on his kneecap. He found himself wishing he'd worn shorts so that he could have felt Midori's hand against his skin. He was immediately embarrassed by the thought. Uraraka really was right about him being far gone. I spilled my soda on him, Uraraka whispered. I'm helping him get it out of his shirt, but dudes keep getting pissy that I'm in the men's room. Midoriya started to get up. I can go. Nope, I got it. Sit, sit, she said, grabbing his shoulders and pushing him back down. Someone behind them shushed her. You two watch the movie, she said, falling back into a whisper. We'll be in as soon as we can. I just wanted to let you know so you didn't worry. Okay, if you're sure. Definitely. Someone shushed her again, and she winced. All right, well, wish us luck, she whispered, and then she got up and quickly ducked back out of the room. Todoroki was mildly suspicious about how true her story was, but he didn't really care. Midori seemed more relaxed now, that he knew that Shinzo and Uraraka hadn't been spirited away by villains or whatever else he may have been thinking. That was all he cared about. They fell silent as they watched the movie, which was about a little girl who had drowned near an island inhabited by just one person— who had some kind of quirk that bonded items to people. She found her body and buried her, then, believing she was haunting her, started hanging up dolls around the island, bonding the dolls to her dead body to appease her spirit. After an accident involving a military truck carrying some sort of mystery chemical, her body reanimated, and the dolls dedicated to her became her army. It was silly, but fun. The zombie makeup was good, and the dolls' movements were choppy and stilted in a way that was unsettling and creepy to watch. About forty minutes in, Todoroki found himself leaning down, putting his lips close to Midori's ear so he could whisper to him that the doll's movements reminded him of the zombie in Return of the Living Dead. That was just a head and torso. Midori swallowed heavily. Yeah, he whispered back. He turned his head a little to look at Todoroki, but snapped his gaze back to the screen the second their eyes met. It's, um, maybe, uh, animatronics. That's what, uh, the torso zombie was. He was tense, if it wasn't obvious by the shift in his posture. Then a sudden gripping of the armrest between them would have given it away. Concerned, Todoroki gently touched his arm. You okay? he whispered. Frowning, he let his fingers run down Midoriya's arm. You have goosebumps. Are you cold? Midoriya nodded stiffly. Yes, he winced and then shifted back to whispering. Yes, just a little. Theaters, you know. They're cold, that's all. It's fine, though. Todoroki put his arm over Midoriya's and gently pulled him away from the armrest so he could lift it up and away. Here, he said in a hush. I'm good for that. He put his arm around Midori's shoulder and started to pull the other toward him, then paused, lifting his arm away. If you want, that is. Sorry, I shouldn't have presumed. Is this okay? Mm-hmm, Midori hummed, nodding quickly. Totally fine. Todoroki wasn't entirely convinced, but he returned his arm to its previous position and pulled Midori closer, until he was pressed against his side. You sure? I won't be offended if you're uncomfortable. Midoriya shook his head. He was still tense. Todoroki could feel it in the shoulder pressed against him, and he had his arms held rigidly in front of him, his balled-up fist pressed into his knees. No, I'm very cold, actually. Really, really cold, so this is... I'm comfortable. He whispered. He took a deep breath and released it, and some of the tension left his shoulders. He shifted, pressing a little closer. Really comfortable, he repeated, sounding surprised. You're so warm. 
just on the one side, which you know because it's obvious. He cleared his throat. If you're ever cold, though, or hot, you can always get close. I won't mind. Is that indefinite? Permission, I mean. Eternal might be more accurate, but we can say indefinite. Midori didn't say anything and kept his eyes on the screen, but he sucked his bottom lip in between his teeth and smiled. Midori seemed to relax more and more as the movie progressed, until his presence at his side was no longer stiff and wary, like he was prepared to bolt. As a woman on screen ran screaming from a horde of dirty, battered dolls, Midori suddenly shifted toward him, placing a hand against his chest as he leaned up. His breath was hot against his ear, and he could practically feel his lips against his skin as he whispered, Her face looks like Red Riot's, doesn't it? Todoroki barked out a surprised laugh, immediately covering his mouth to stifle the sound. Midori had moved back a little, but was still incredibly close as he grinned at Todoroki, looking all too pleased with himself. I won't be able to unsee it now, he complained quietly, giving Midori a playful glare. I hope you're happy. More or less, he said cheekily. They watched the rest of the movie that way, leaning in close to whisper back and forth at times it almost felt like a game, seeing how close he could bring his mouth to Midori's ear without touching. And maybe it was wishful thinking, but it sort of felt like Midori was playing the same game. Whenever he would turn to whisper to Todoroki, he'd place a hand against his chest to help steady himself as he leaned up. If he felt the frantic pounding of Todoroki's heart, he didn't say anything. It wasn't until the movie was over and he was walking to the lobby, arms still draped over Midori's shoulders, that he realized Uraraka and Shinso never returned. He checked his phone, which he had kept on silent during the film, but he didn't have any missed messages. He said as much to Midori, who checked his own phone. He had two messages, both from Shinso. I've been kidnapped. Help, Midori read. He raised an eyebrow. In hindsight, that last message may have been alarming. Uraraka's my kidnapper, so I'm safe. But also, help. He looked up at Todoroki. I'll call her, Todoroki said with a sigh. There was no telling what kind of game she was playing. She picked up the phone after the second ring, yelling as she answered. Hey, Kachan, what's up? Todoroki winced as he leaned away from the phone. Please don't shout. Also, I'm not Kachan. Ooh, sorry, I just assumed, because you were calling instead of texting and only old men like Kachan do that. My name comes up on the ID. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He sighed. Where are you? Oh, right. Sorry, is the movie over? It is. Oops, darn. Well, I hope you two enjoyed it without us, just the two of you, alone. We did, he said, quickly glancing down at Midori to try to ascertain if the other had heard her basically admit to ditching them so they could be alone. Midori looked innocently back at him, looking mildly confused as he tilted his head to the side. Todoroki looked away. He wouldn't be able to hold a conversation with Uraraka if he was watching Midoriya unintentionally do cute things. That's great, Uraraka said. Nichan and I actually left the theater. See, when I said I spilled my soda, I meant all over him, and we just couldn't get the stain out. And I wasn't about to let him walk around with a wet stained shirt, and we'd already missed a bunch of the movie, so we left to go shopping. He's having a great time. He heard Shinzo's voice in the background, but he couldn't make out what he was saying. He guessed it was probably a disagreement to Uraraka's claim, because she shushed him. Where are you? We'll come find you. I have a better idea. We're finishing up here, so how about we all get dinner? There's a place called Nakajima. It's a couple of blocks from the theater. Suyu-chan and I went there before and it was good. Want to meet there? Todoroki lowered his phone. Want to get dinner? Oh, sure. That would be great. He put his phone back to his ear. We'll meet you there. Great. You're actually closer than we are. Plus, we still have to pay, so go ahead and get us a table. We'll meet you inside. Sure. See you soon. See you soon. Todoroki exited the call and looked up the restaurant. True to her word, it was just a short walk away. They want to meet us there. They went shopping since Jinso's shirt was ruined. Oh, well, aravati san did say she wanted to go shopping with him, so I guess that's sort of a good thing. It's a shame you bought their tickets for nothing, though. Todoroki moved, so Midori was on his cold side, since they were out of the chilly theater and heading into the summer heat, and then returned his arm to its place around his shoulders. It's fine. It was nice having empty seats around us. He wouldn't have had a problem shamelessly flirting while sitting next to a complete stranger. He was good at ignoring people. But he had a feeling Midoriya would have been too nervous to reciprocate, had someone unknown been sitting on either side. Assuming Midoriya had been reciprocating. He probably was, whispering in his ear and touching his chest that was flirting, right? Probably. No. Definitely. Maybe. That's true, Midoriya said as they stepped outside. It was nice having a little more privacy. Or, uh... 
M maybe not privacy, but uh, just being able to talk and not bother anyone. Unless, did it bother you? I know some people are really serious about talking during movies. I started it, he reminded him. But regardless, it didn't bother me. If anything, it made watching the movie more enjoyable. I like talking to you. I like talking to you, too, Midoriya said quietly. He cleared his throat and looked away. So, um, the movie, did you, uh, like it? It was fun. Zombie movies are always a bit nostalgic to me. My freshman year of high school, before Shinzo joined our class, we were all involved in a zombie attack sort of scenario. As he was talking, Midoriya had reached up and was idly touching the hand hanging off his shoulder, toying with his fingers. Todoroki was positive he didn't realize he was doing it, and he tried his best to keep cool, lest Midoriya realize what he was doing and cease his behavior. It happened in the woods, so in the middle when we were in the island center, with all the trees, it sort of reminded me of that, especially with the Kirishima look-alike there. He made the exact same expression she does when he's freaked out over something like zombies biting him, for instance. Hey, you can't just tell me you get attacked by zombies and not tell me the full story. Midoriya said, pouting. He laced their fingers together and squeezed, and Todoroki thought his heart might burst out of his chest right then and there. He felt like a kid, getting so worked up over holding hands. How on earth was it possible to want to hold hands with Midoriya and cuddle with him under a blanket and nuzzle into the crook of his neck with nearly the same veracity as he wanted to carry him into his room, throw him onto the bed, and rip off all his clothes with his teeth? Nearly being a key word there. That was a train of thought to explore later, though. Shaking those thoughts from his mind, he let himself bask in the euphoria of Midoriya casually holding his hand as he told him the story of Isamu Academy's visit to UA and the disaster that was their joint survival training turned zombie disaster. He never really considered it a terribly interesting event. It was just another day at UA, but Midoriya was positively enthralled by the story. It was a different experience for him. His friends sometimes teased him for being boring. He didn't mind. He was boring at least outside of being a hero, but Midori acted like he was so interesting. It was sort of nice. Unfortunately, getting to the restaurant brought about the end of their hand-holding. The hostess recognized both of them and greeted them enthusiastically, her gaze shooting through their joint hands mid-greeting. Midori let go with a flurry of apologies, explaining that he was always fiddling with things as a nervous habit. He asked him if he made him nervous, and Midori blushed, and he told him no. They requested a table for four and were seated quickly, they chatted idly while they waited for their drinks, but as soon as Midoriya's glass was placed in front of him, he grew quiet, staring pensively into the bluish-green, fruity concoction he'd ordered. He seemed like he had something on his mind, so Todoroki waited quietly, letting him think. Eventually, still staring at his drink, he spoke. I really like hanging out with you. I like hanging out with you, too. He thought Midoriya might get flustered, hearing him say it back, but he remained pensive. He started twisting his drink in his hands. There's... Something you should probably know about me. Something I haven't been entirely honest about. He stayed quiet, waiting patiently for the other to continue. It, it's fine. If you don't want to hang out anymore, or if you don't like me or something, I totally get it. I won't blame you, and I won't tell anyone that you dislike me for it. Although I think most people would think poorly of you for something like that, but Kachan didn't really think, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't bring him up. But regardless, it's very understandable, if you dislike me, I mean. Izuku. I don't know what you're talking about. Right, right, sorry. He took a deep breath. Extreme tolerance to pain isn't my quirk. Todoroki blinked, caught off guard. That's not... Izuku, you literally broke your arm in the middle of your Hawks video, and you didn't even flinch. He flushed, looking embarrassed. I said Al. The same way someone would when getting a paper cut, how on earth could you not have a pain tolerance? Is it something similar? No, it's... I have a good poker face for pain. I hid a lot of injuries from my mom growing up because I didn't want her to worry and my classmates would always... He stopped moving his glass. Sorry, I'm getting off topic. I'm quirkless is what I'm trying to say. Todoroki opened his mouth to ask him what he meant about hidden injuries, but Midoriya forged ahead, speaking quickly. I didn't mean to lie. The studio, though... People send in questions for me sometimes, the Q&A videos, and people were starting to ask what my quirk was, and the studio, they're very nice to me, and some of the higher-ups were worried about me getting death threats and, uh, rates dropping and such, so they told me to lie. And like I said, I'm good at being in pain, so that seemed like the easiest thing to fake. It's hard to disprove. Todoroki felt sort of numb as he watched Midoriya talk. In favor of spinning his glass, he'd taken to cupping his hands around it and squeezing. He wouldn't take his eyes off of it. Have you gotten death threats before? He shook his head rapidly, and Todoroki felt a bit of relief, at least until Midoriya spoke. Not directly, 
not like a I'm going to kill you sort of thing. He gave a quick laugh. That would be kind of scary. All I get is sort of mundane stuff like, please go kill yourself. He cleared his throat. Without the please, though, and actually it hasn't happened since my freshman year of college, and the last time was just someone saying they'd kill themselves that they were me, which is a lot gentler of a thing to say, but, uh, yeah, um, now you know, I'm quirkless. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell anyone, cause the studio will get upset. Old classmates we can easily dismiss if they called me out, but obviously the public trusts you, so, um, but if you don't want to see me anymore, that's fine, he said, blinking heavily. The pace at which he was speaking was increasing as he went. I can actually leave now, if you want, or I can wait until Ravity san and he he Tony on get here if that would be if that would be less his voice hitched, and he let go of his glass, resting his hands on his knees as he brought his shoulders forward. If it would be less awkward, I'm sorry, I he broke off there as he started to cry. Todoroki got up immediately. They'd been seated in a booth and had sat down across from each other, and he crossed over to Midoriya's side, sliding in next to him. Hey, he said gently as he placed a hand on Midoriya's arm. It doesn't bother me. Please don't cry, can I? He asked as he gently pulled Midoriya towards him. Midoriya allowed himself to be drawn into Todoroki's arms, but he shook his head as he started crying harder. You don't... He paused to suck in a breath. You don't have to. You probably don't... You don't have to touch me. I'm... He paused again, to hiccup. I, I'm sorry I held your hand. I really didn't mean to. Izuku, it doesn't bother me. He repeated, burying his fingers in the other's hair and pulling him closer so the freckled face could hide against him. I liked it when you held my hand, and I'm sorry if this sounds callous. I'm not really the best at expressing myself. But I could really care less if you had a quirk or not. That isn't something that'll affect if I like you or not. The idea that I wouldn't want to touch you like you're some sort of leper or something. It would take a lot more than not having a quirk to stop me from wanting to touch you. Midori went still in his hold, and he winced. Sorry, that sounded a little different in my head. Have I mentioned that I'm bad with words? Midori leaned back just enough that he could rub at the tears still tracking down his face and laughed breathily. I am too. I always... I always... He sucked in a quick breath. I say too much. He sniffed and rubbed at his eyes. Like now. I probably overshared. I did... Def he was cut off by a weak sob. Definitely did. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cry either. I'll s stop, I promise. I'm not trying to guilt trip you into being nice he said as he furiously scrubbed at his eyes. I just cry a lot, so please don't, please don't feel bad if you don't want to talk to me anymore. Izuku, I'm sorry if this is too forward, but I want to talk to you more than anyone I know. Maybe that's weird since we only just met a couple of weeks ago, but it's the truth. I like talking to you, and hanging out with you, I like you. Izuku hiccuped, his eyes wide and disbelieving. We're still glistening and Todoroki reached up to wipe away a stray tear. I like you too, Midoriya whispered. Todoroki let his hand trail down his cheek, heart rabbiting violently when the other leaned into the touch. I don't care if you're quirkless, he repeated. I do care that you've been treated poorly because of it, though. You spoke like none of it, the suicide threats or baiting, whatever you want to call it, like it's not a big deal. You don't believe that, do you? Right now, what you said... If I stopped liking you just because you're quirkless, you realize that that would make me a huge asshole, right? Midori leaned further back, frowning. I mean, it's pretty normal. It's not right. I know that. Being quirkless isn't... You don't choose, but it's what everyone does, mostly. You can't just get mad at everyone. I think you can. I am, right now. In fact, if you give me a list of names... Midori laughed a real laugh and playfully pushed him away. Stop! They were all just kids, following the crowd. Don't go headhunting on my behalf. Todoroki grabbed the hand that shoved him and laced their fingers together, if just to reemphasize to Midoriya that he wasn't put off by him. He paused, thinking over Midoriya's words. You don't have to answer this, but if you don't mind, how many people... How often do people say things like that to you? Midoriya gripped Todoroki's hand back, smiling bashfully at their joined palms. Not often. The first time wasn't until my last year of middle school. The person who said it was sort of... I don't know if popular was the word, but people listened to him. So after he said it, it sort of became a trend. So I guess I heard it a lot then. Maybe once a week? It was usually the same people, though. And like I said, they were sort of just copying someone else. So they probably didn't even mean it much. It was more like a joke. Like a running gag just for our class. And then high school wasn't a big deal at all. 
that was probably only once every two to three months, which if you consider breaks and that it's only three years, that's really not a lot. And college was only like twice. And like I said, one of those barely even counts, so it really wasn't bad. I don't even know why I cry about it, he said brightly, shooting Todoroki a smile that trembled. I guess it was more, I like you, and I'm still not trying to guilt trip you, but, uh, I guess I was just sad that you might not want to talk to me anymore. I'm used to people doing that. Hitonian is really my only friend, and, uh, that probably sounds pathetic, but, uh, I just, I'm used to people leaving. But, uh, I guess I just, I was sad at the idea that you might want to leave too, because, well, he trailed off, face burning red. I just like spending time with you, is all. And I guess I just made things weird. I'm sorry. I meant to tell you just that I was quirkless and that's it. I just made things really awkward, right? I can leave, really. I don't mind. I'd prefer if you stayed. Todoroki said he wished he could kiss him to prove how much he liked him, but he couldn't shake the feeling that it wouldn't be right. Midori was crying. This wasn't a romantic moment. And to kiss him now would feel like he was taking advantage of a moment of weakness. He decided to toe the line, bringing Midoriya's hand to his lips and pressing a chaste kiss to the back. If you really want to leave, you can. I'll go with you to make sure you get home safely, but I'd like it if you'd stay and have dinner with me. I want to talk to you more. I want to keep getting to know each other. The way you were treated, it wasn't okay. That kind of behavior can't be called a joke or a gag. That's something I'd like to talk with you about, too, as we get to know each other more. Midoriya's smile faltered briefly. Tears were re-pulling in his eyes. I mean, I know it wasn't nice. It really wasn't a, a big deal. It was just some childish bullying. I wasn't... It wasn't abuse or something serious like that. I don't agree. But I don't really expect you to listen to me yet. Midori looked like he was going to protest, so he pressed on. I want to keep getting to know each other, he repeated sternly. If that's what you want, too. He was still holding Midori's hand, clasped as if he were going to kiss it again. A blush steadily crept over Midori's features, until his ears and neck were both bright red... He hesitantly nodded. Okay. Yeah, I want that too, so I'll... I'll stay, if you really want, if it's not too awkward. It's not, but just to be clear, you don't ever have to feel self-conscious about being awkward around me. Shinzo and Ochako can both confirm that I could write a book on being awkward. I could win awards for being awkward. Midoriya smiled. He took his hand from Todoroki's grasp, but only so he could press them back together, fingers flexed. Their hands were similarly sized, despite Midoriya's petite stature. So far, you seem pretty charming to me. Give me time. Midoriya laughed, bashful but real, and some of the tension between them dissipated. Here, Todoroki said, reaching for his napkin. All he'd ordered was water, but he had yet to touch it. He dipped a small section of the cloth into the water and wrung it out, and then gently started wiping tear tracks from Midoriya's face. Your water's probably gross now. I'm sure it's fine. I can always ask for a new glass, though. Or I can share whatever this is that you have here. Midoriya shrugged lightly. Something with blue curacao and pineapple. There was a picture on the menu, and I thought it looked pretty. Todoroki laughed quietly. I guess that's as good a reason as any to order something. Here, close your eyes. They're swollen. Midoriya did as he was told. While they were talking, he'd slotted their fingers together, and had absentmindedly been squeezing Todoroki's between his own. Todoroki gently disentangled their hands so he could press cool fingertips against the other's eyelids and beneath his eyes. Midori brought his shoulders up at the first touch, giving a soft, giddy laugh. It's so cold. One of the perks of being a combo AC heater of a human being. What a perk. You're a magnet for cats and guys who cry a lot. I'll take the cats, but I only need one crying guy in my magnetic field. The others can go buy ice packs. Midori laughed loudly, smiling ear to ear. Stop it! I'm going to start thinking Hijinian is right about you being a dork. I mean, I wouldn't say he's wrong, so... Midori kept smiling, occasionally letting a small laugh slip through, as Todoroki finished chilling his eyes. When he finally took his hand away, the swelling wasn't completely gone, but it was noticeably better. Midori opened his eyes, blinking a couple of times. Good as new, Todoroki said, gaining a small smile for his efforts. Thank you, Shodokun. You're really sweet, you know. He dropped his gaze to his lap. Sorry I ruined things. We were having, or, well, I was having a really great time at least. I guess I spoiled all that. I was having a good time too, Todoroki said. But I don't think that's spoiled. I'm glad you told me since it was bothering you. 
And now I know a little more about you, so I don't think anything's been ruined, although... He smirked a bit as he reclaimed Midoriya's hand. If it'll make you feel better, I can tell you all about my childhood traumas next time we go out, for dinner and a movie. Then we'll be even. He expected the other to laugh, but he simply stared at him, looking thoughtful as he chewed at his bottom lip. After a moment, he nodded. Okay, I'd... I'll listen, so please do, if you feel comfortable with that. I want to know more about you, too. It's a promise, then. Midoriya nodded and the smile was trembling again, although this time it looked less like he was trying to prevent a breakdown and more like... Todoroki wasn't sure. Whatever it was, though, he thought he was feeling the same thing. The sudden noise of someone clearing their throat got both of their attentions. They looked up to find their waiter standing there, pointedly not looking at them. Hey, excuse me, I wanted to check on how you were doing. Did you want to maybe order an appetizer while you waited for the rest of your party? Todoroki wondered how long she'd been watching them. Based on the tomato-red shade of Midoriya's skin, he was questioning the same thing. Sure, Todoroki said. He turned back toward Midoriya. See anything that sounds good? Oh, um, probably. Hold on, I'll, uh... While Midoriya scanned through appetizers, Todoroki grabbed his own menu from across the table and perused the drinks. Do you think I could get another drink? Which of these would you say is the prettiest, aside from the one we already have? Prettiest? I guess maybe the blueberry colada. It's frozen, and it's blueberry syrup. It contrasts with the coconut, and it's sort of pretty. Great. One of those. He turned to Midori, and the other immediately pressed against him, pushing the menu over so it was between them. The grilled avocado yellowtail thing sounds good, or maybe the pork dumplings. Do you want both? No way! Hitonian says eight a lot, but he just exaggerates everything to get a rise out of me. I narrowed it down to two, though, so you pick which, that way it'll be more like we decided together. He couldn't argue with that logic. Midoriya probably knew he'd agree with whatever he chose. Simp, for Araka's voice accused in his head. So it was a kind gesture, basically forcing him to voice his opinion in a way that still felt like he was giving Midoriya what he wanted. They went with the yellow tail, their waiters jotted down their order, and then they were left alone. Um... Midori glanced up at him as he leaned away, so they were no longer pressed together. You don't have to stay on this side if you don't want to. It probably feels awkward being on the same side, right? Like I said, I'm great at being awkward. Besides, it won't be awkward once Ochako and Shinto show up if they show up. Do you dislike it? Oh no, not at all. It's sort of... I don't mind it, being on the same side. Not if you don't. I don't mind it. Unless I'm making you warm. No, that's... There's air conditioning, so it's not... It's sort of nice, really. Todoroki slid a little closer, pressing against him, again, so that their arms were touching, then leaned across Midoriya to grab his glass. Don't mind me. I just want to try your drink. Midoriya snorted as he bumped their shoulders together. Really? Sort of feels like maybe you're trying to, you know, like, be smooth or something? Have you even tried it yourself yet? He asked, ignoring what he said as he grabbed his drink. He brought it up so the straw was close to Midoriya's mouth and the other took the hint, leaning forward to take a sip, as soon as he was finished. Todoroki leaned forward, capturing the straw in his mouth. Midori swallowed his blush was fading, but a persistent light pink was still staining his cheeks. That's sort of like... like an indirect... Todoroki released the straw after his drinking some and handed the glass to Midoriya. An indirect what? Midori took the offered glass, pouting as he sipped once more through the straw. When he was done, he placed a drink down on the table. Maybe you are smooth. For a dork. Midoriya grinned. For a dork, he agreed. They moved on to lighter topics then, talking about Midoriya's recent video on Mirko and Todoroki's recent villain apprehensions. When the waitress came by with Todoroki's drink and their appetizer, they shared a glance. Should we just order? Todoroki asked. I'll text Hitonian, but uh, I guess we should, just in case. We may have been ditched, Todoroki explained to the waitress. Could you give us just a few more minutes to decide our orders? Absolutely. Please take your time. Midori texts Shinso, and they both peruse their menus, making idle comments about their favorite types of food. When the waitress returned, Shinso still hadn't responded, so they placed their orders. Once she was gone, Todoroki tried his drink, which, as she said, was pretty, if not elegant. Before he could set it down, Midori overlapped his hand over Todoroki's and leaned forward trying it as well. Todoroki couldn't help but grin. Now who's smooth? Don't get used to it, Midori equipped back as he leaned back, removing his hand. I'm usually pretty bumpy, I think. That's fine. I'll take bumpy sincerity over smooth charm any day. Me too. Midori spoke, voice hushed as 
He picked at their appetizer. Um, so, I haven't, uh, Soba. I haven't asked about Soba. How is he? Better, he answered. He'd already told Midoriya while they were talking on the phone that Soba was taking some time to adjust. When they brought him home, he holed himself up in the bathroom where his litter box was, and mostly stayed there all day, only venturing out for food and water. It lasted about three days before he started to finally explore his surroundings, albeit hesitantly. A lot better, actually, he added, pulling out his phone. I actually took a picture. I meant to show you. When I woke up this morning, he was in my bed, pressed up against me. Don't mind my appearance, I just wanted to take a picture because I was glad he felt safe sleeping next to me. He showed Midoriya's screen. After bringing up the photo, he wasn't great at selfies, but he did his best. He was in bed, wearing a tank top, and lying on his side, with his head propped up on his hand, and Soba was pressed snug up against his chest while he reached in front of him to take the picture. He didn't really realize at the time how disheveled his hair was. It was actually a little embarrassing. At least he remembered a smile, although it was kind of a tired, lazy smile. Now that he was really looking, it might have been a bad picture. He shouldn't have shown it. The sentiment felt pretty much confirmed when Midoriya didn't say anything, staring silently at the screen before him. Todoroki cleared his throat. Just ignore me. I had just woken up, so but though he looked really peaceful, I think. He's cute when he sleeps. Midoriya nodded. Very cute. You should post this on your Instagram so I can... He coughed. Uh, so, um, so your fans can look at it and see Soba whenever they want. Todoroki glanced back down at the photo. I didn't really plan on posting anything else on there. Besides, Uraraka's already posted at least 30 pictures of him, so fans can see him on her page. But you look beautiful, Midori murmured, just before he popped a piece of yellowtail in his mouth. He stopped chewing after less than a second, going still. I mean, he made a noise and put his hand in front of his mouth, chewing for a few more seconds. It's a beautiful picture, I mean, he said, swallowing his food and immediately choking. He grabbed his drink and took a desperate swig as Todoroki patted his back. It's a beautiful moment, is what I'm trying to say, he gasped out, thumping his chest. Beautiful like, here's a beautiful man and his cat. I mean, uh, a man and his cat, his beautiful cat, a beautiful relationship. That is, that's what I meant. And, uh, um, if you, if you say you adopted him, maybe that'll encourage other people to adopt too, because people admire you, because you're... You're great, and so, regardless of the picture, it would still be nice to, uh, yes, to, uh, do whatever I'm talking about. Todoroki felt his own skin growing warm as Midori babbled. Beautiful wasn't really a term he'd normally apply to himself. Instagram, he said, and Midori laughed as if he'd said something funny. Instagram, right, duh, I'm so, but, uh, yeah, post on Instagram and say you adopted, and that will be good. He nodded. Okay, can I tag you in the picture and say you helped Otako me pick him? Midori's blush faded, a little as he took a deep breath, the frantic energy he was exuding dissipating. Me? I mean, I guess I see the rationale tagging other people might bring more attention to the picture, but, uh, Shodokun, in my analysis of you, um, maybe you don't remember, but, uh, I sort of said I had, that I had a, you know, crush on you, he said. He was staring down into his drink as if looking for a way to drown himself in it. So, um, if you tag me in a post, people might get the wrong idea and think that maybe you, uh, are now hanging out with me because you also do have a crush on me. So you probably don't want to do that. I'm not the best with these sorts of things, so I really can't tell if I'm being that unclear or if you're just stubborn. He exited out of the photo on his phone and opened Instagram, scanning the screen to remember how to upload a photo. What do you mean? Right, it was the plus sign. He clicked it. And the picture of himself and Soba first in his camera roll had showed up. I've always done better with being blunt, he said as he typed out a caption. He kept it brief. This is Soba. Aravity OG and I recently adopted him. Ad Dekumite came with us to the shelter to help pick him out. He's cute. He decided to try tags this time, so he ended his caption. Hashtag cat. One tag was enough. He posted the photo and held his screen up for Midoriya to see. I don't mind if everyone thinks I have a crush on you. Because I do. You... Midori's face exploded with color, his ears turning so deeply red they might have passed for bruises. You... He repeated, leaning back. But that's... Are you... Are you joking? No. That isn't something I'd joke about. But... But, uh... Shoto, I'm not... He swallowed. The real me, Izuku, isn't as funny or, uh... I don't know, charming as Deku is. I'm a mess. You've already seen I'm a mess. Todoroki Shoto isn't as cool or suave as Pro Hero Shoto either. 
You said so yourself. I'm a dork. Do you like me less for it? No, absolutely not, I... I'm a mess, too, he interrupted. I think a lot of people probably are, in one way or another. But I still like you. I liked Deku before. And now I like Izuku. Midori's shoulders lowered as he calmed down, staring at Todoroki. I also... I mean... Todoroki Shoto is who I... He shook his head. Sorry, just give me a second to... Shoto, I... Sorry, Shoto-kun, I... Shoto is fine. Sh Shoto, do you think, maybe, would you... With me, I mean, would you... Deku-kun! Shoto! Midori jumped at the sound of Uraraka's voice, snapping his head toward its source. Todoroki was also startled, but he didn't show it as he looked up, finding Uraraka and Shinzo walking toward them. Todoroki raised an eyebrow as he looked them both up and down. He still wasn't sure about the truthfulness behind the soda incident, but Uraraka clearly hadn't lied about going shopping. His chaotic roommate hugged Shinzo's arm as she beamed at them. Well, what do you think? We look great, right? We're trying to become a new TikTok meme. We aren't, Shinzo deadpanned. I really like both of your sunglasses, Midoriya said, shaking off his initial surprise and smiling at them. The lenses are cool. The sunglasses were okay, Todoroki thought. Uraraka's pair was perfectly round with lenses that started out pink at the top and transitioned to orange at the bottom. Shinso's were, surprisingly, a little sillier. He also contained a gradient of color on the lenses, bright purple that faded into blue, but they were shaped like stars. Honestly, Todoroki might call his entire outfit silly. The pants were perhaps the most mundane, black bell bottoms with a gold chain belt that drooped in a way that had Todoroki question its actual functionality. His shirt was outrageous. It was made of mesh with a thick black hem around the neckline and the bottom, so his chest and stomach were incredibly visible. To match the belt, he was also wearing a gold chain necklace. Over those things was the most ludicrous piece of all, a large, fluffy, light purple faux fur coat. He pushed his sunglasses up on top of his head. He looked miserable but resigned, like a dog who had finally accepted that their owner was going to dress them up in little outfits, whether they liked it or not. Are you hot in that coat, Hitonian? Yes. Take it off, then, Uraraka said, letting go of him so she could wave a hand at him, as if to dismiss his complaint. Shinzo looked down at the mesh shirt that was barely covering him. No, he answered. With a sigh, he slid into the booth, sitting across from Midoriya. Uraraka pushed her sunglasses up as well, rolling her eyes as she did. Her outfit seemed less extravagant, but Todoroki wasn't quite sure if that was just because he was used to seeing her experiment with fashion, as opposed to Shinzo, who always wore plain clothes. Uraraka was wearing a light blue leopard print shirt with thin straps, a camisole. Todoroki thought it might have been called. She had it tucked into a high-waisted, tight black skirt, and she had paired the outfit with some light pink contraption of a shoe. They were heels, and there were straps everywhere. They went all the way up to her kneecaps. The straps had small, glittery butterflies sewn all over them. Todoroki imagined they were probably a pain to put on. To finish the ensemble, draped over her arms with a fluffy boa, also in light pink. Where on earth did you go shopping? Todoroki asked as Uraraka slid into the booth after Shinso. Lots of places, she chirped. Lots of places, Shinso echoed forlornly. Do you not like your outfit? Midori asked, cupping his hands around his glass. Shinso paused to consider. It inspires a certain level of confidence, I guess. You pull it off! Uraraka cheered. Of course I pull it off. That was never a question. He grabbed Midori's drink from him and lifted it so he could smell it. He wrinkled his nose and passed it off to Uraraka, who was tugging on his sleeve, and let his eyes rake over Midori's face. You okay? Yeah, he answered simply, pressing his fingertips self-consciously to the areas around his eyes. Shinzo glanced at Todoroki, his expression cool. What were you guys talking about? Just high school, Midori answered quickly. Shotokun, you should release sunglasses like theirs with the two colors. You could do a red and blue and fire ice sort of thing. That would be pretty, Uraraka agreed as she handed Midori his drink back. Unlike Todoroki, she'd sampled it from the rim rather than using the straw. Once Midori took the glass from her, she made grabby hands at Todoroki until he handed her his. Okay, he said. It's just a thought, Midori added. Obviously you don't. You should do what you want. And I know you don't put a lot of merch out, so maybe that was kind of thoughtless of me to suggest it. I'm not opposed to merchandise. I just don't have fun with it like a lot of other heroes. You either have to approve designs, or put out so much merch you can justify hiring someone to take care of it. I don't want to do that, but I'm not great at deciding what designs look best. Right. Forget I said anything. It'll be a hassle. No, I'll do it. Do you want to help me pick the design? 
Me? Midori asked. He started waving his hands. No, no, I'm awful at that kind of stuff. Don't be silly, Deku-kun, Uraraka said. She slid Todoroki his drink and grabbed the appetizer plate, pulling it toward her and Chinso's side. You're like the king of hero merch. If anyone could pick the perfect design, it'd be you. You can just pick the pair you think would look best on you. You need sunglasses, right? Todoroki pointed out. Or have you already replaced the ones Bakugo stole? He blinked, feeling caught off guard as he processed his own words. Bakugo stole his sunglasses. Bakugo stole his sunglasses and Midoriya said it was just like old times. No, not yet. I keep forgetting. Bakugo said he hated him. You do not. You whine about it every time you go outside. I don't whine, Midoriya said, kicking Shinso under the table. I just can't find the Red Riot ones anymore. Bakugo was the one to nickname him Deku, which, despite how Uraraka interpreted the name, seemed less of a reference to Takiru and more of one to Dekunobu, a useless person. That's probably why Kachan took them, Uraraka pointed out. I haven't found a pair I like as much as those, and I don't want to waste money on a pair I don't really like, though sometimes the sun is really bright. Bakugo went to middle school with him, where he must have noticed the suicide taunts if they were happening on a weekly basis. When we license stuff, they usually send us prototypes to look at before they start making the real deal. Not for my costume, though. I wouldn't have approved that. I'm so sorry about that, by the way. Um, you don't have to apologize to me for that. No, no, I'll make it up to you. But I was saying, maybe Shoto could give you a prototype of his glasses, just so you can have a pair until the official ones come out. He and Bakugo needed to have a talk. Shoto-kun? He glanced down at Midori, who was looking up at him in concern. Sorry, I was just thinking. Uraraka's... Ahem. Ochako's right, about the prototypes. I'll give it to you, regardless of if you help or not. If you wouldn't mind, though, I'd appreciate your help. Well, okay, if you really want me to. If you change your mind, though, that's totally fine. Obviously, I just meant my feelings wouldn't be hurt or anything. Not to say I'm not looking forward to helping. I am. That's actually pretty exciting. He sucked in his bottom lip in between his teeth and bit down. Shinzo kicked him under the table. Stop biting your lips. You're going to break the skin again. I wasn't biting that hard, Midori grumbled, kicking him back. You're going to end up making poor Todoroki release a Shoto-themed chapstick. Shut up, Midori hissed, kicking him again. Shinso kicked him back. You two are so cute, Uraraka said. You're just like brothers. Pretty soon I'll be the only cute one, because Zuku won't have any skin on his lips. You aren't cute even with skin on your lips. They squabbled until their waiters came to take Uraraka and Shinso's orders. Midori stopped immediately, turning red and muttering an apology. Todoroki had no idea to whom, about being childish. Shinso did not apologize, but rather took advantage of the opportunity to get in the last kick. Sorry, we ordered before, Todoroki said as the waitress left. She told him and Midoriya that their food would be out shortly. We thought maybe you'd gotten held up again. I texted you, Midori said to Shinso. I answered. Huh? Midori grabbed his phone off the table to check. Oh, I never... I put it on silent in the theater. Sorry, this is my... His brows furrowed. Horikoshi-san called me. When? Just a minute ago, he muttered as he adjusted the volume on the device. He didn't leave a message, so it's probably not important. I'll call him back later. As if his words had summoned him, Horikoshi immediately called again, but I'll be at this time on Shinzo's phone. We don't mind if you answer here, Uraraka said, unless you want privacy. Nope, Shinzo said as he accepted his call. Hey, producer-san. Deku-kun is avoiding your calls. I am not. Right, right, because you bully him. He does not. Hitoshi. Midoriya stood reaching across the table, but Shinso just leaned into Uraraka, turning, so the phone was practically hidden between his face and her shoulder. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, of course he cried. Did you think he wouldn't? You shouldn't stress him so much. Hitoshi, stop it. Well, yeah, I'm sure he'd love it if you let him do another All Might video. Midoriya stopped reaching for the phone. Of his choice? Sure, sure, he'd definitely forgive you then. Midoriya slowly sat back down. Cool, I'll text him. Hmm? Shoto? His eyes flicked over to Todoroki. He tagged Deku? Well, yeah. Uh-huh. On Insta? Uraraka whispered, pulling out her phone. Oh, me too. They are, Shinzo said. Oh my god, Shoto! Uraraka wheezed over her phone. You can't just post a sexy photo and not tell me. It's not sexy, though. He glanced at Midoriya for confirmation, but the other man looked away guiltily. Oh. 
a great idea, Shinzo was saying. I'll ask Deku for you. Right, right, mention All Might first. Got it. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. Don't even mention it. See ya. He ended the call. So, he said, leaving the safety of Uraraka's shoulder and sitting up straight. Two things. First, All Might video. Any topic you want, buddy. I want to do Let's Play one of his video games. Inspired choice. Horikoshi thinks that you cried over the cat headband pick, though. Which, I mean, you did. Barely. But regardless, he feels bad, so maybe give him a thank you hug or something. Okay, I can do that. Second, he saw Todoroki tagged you on Instagram, which, or Araka. She showed him her phone, and he nodded. You really like being on the news, huh? I won't be on the news, Todoroki grumbled. It's a mundane picture. Sure. Just a mundane picture of a man with his huge chest and huge biceps in bed with his cat. Won't be on the news. Want to play some bet? No, he muttered. That's what I thought. Anyway, Zuku, Horikoshi knows you two know each other now, so he wants you to convince Todoroki. No. To do an interview video with you. No. Live streamed. No! And fans will send in the questions. I'll do it, Todoroki said. You don't like doing interviews, Midoriya said, rounding on him. He shrugged. Seems like a waste of time, usually. Exactly. I don't want to waste your time. You won't, though. I like talking to you, so it's different. It's not a waste if it's something I like doing. Midoriya pouted. Do you not want to interview me? No, that's not it. You're right that I don't interview often. I might be bad at it. No, no, that's not... I wouldn't want to embarrass you. No, you couldn't. Just... Fine. Still pouting, he crossed his arms and slumped down in his seat. We can do it, but I'm more awkward when we're live, so just be forewarned. Maybe we can make it a contest, to see who's most awkward. Midoriya laughed. I'll accept that challenge. Saying I beat Shoto in a competition will give me pretty big bragging rights. You'll have to win first, he said, smirking gently. Feeling eyes on him, he turned to find Uraraka and Shinzo staring at them. Uraraka grinned at him in a way that seemed to be suggesting something, though he wasn't entirely sure what. He flushed and cleared his throat. So... When will this be, Shinso? He wants to do it next week, ideally. He can deal with whatever, though. Let me know when you're free, and we'll announce it to the fans. They talked a bit about how the show was run, continuing their conversation after the waitress brought them their food. Before he knew it, he had paid. Midori threw a fit, Todoroki turned away from him, hunching over the bill while he got his card from his wallet. All the other pressed against his back, trying to reach around him to steal the bill. It was wonderful. And then they were standing outside. Well... Shinzo said, bringing his star sunglasses back down. It's been fun. Thanks for buying, Todoroki. I appreciate it. Sorry I missed the movie. Todoroki almost rolled his eyes. Shinzo probably had been in on Uraraka's soda-spilling scheme. Don't mention it. He looked at Midoriya. I had a good time. Midoriya smiled shyly back. I did too. Me too, Uraraka cheered. We should go shopping again, Shinzo ni No. Hmm. Deku-kun? Me? Oh, um, sure. You have no sense of self-preservation, Shinzo drawled, earning a glare from Midoriya. He ignored him and looked back to Todoroki. Let us know when you're free. I will. He looked to Midoriya. I can call you, once I know. Sure, Midoriya said, stepping in front of Shinzo. That would be really great, or just, you know, good. I would like it a normal amount. You can call me. Okay, he said, smiling. Before I forget, though, I wanted to ask, earlier, what were you going to ask me? Midori looked down. Was I going to ask you something? Yeah, right before Shinzo and Ochako showed up. Oh, um, I don't remember. Sorry, I'm sure it wasn't important. It's fine. You can always text me if you remember. Midori nodded quickly, keeping his gaze fixed on the ground. Todoroki thought he was acting a little odd, but decided not to question it. I'll see you later, he said, and Midoriya finally looked up. Yeah, and, uh, thanks for today, for, well, for everything, and, um, thanks for agreeing to do the interview. You didn't have to. You still don't have to. I'm looking forward to it. Midoriya smiled, and Todoroki knew he would have agreed to do any interview to get him to smile like that. He'd have let his dad interview him for a smile like that. Me too. I guess I'll see you then. Yeah, I'll... Bye. Shinzo said loudly, grabbing Midoriya's arm and yanking him away. I'll text you, Deku-kun, Uraraka called behind her as she grabbed Todoroki's arm and pulled him in the opposite direction. 
He waited until they got home to check Shinso. It was a simple exchange. Do you think he's warmed up to me yet? I really want to ask him out, but I don't want to make him uncomfortable. Shinso texted back almost immediately. I don't know what you did, but if he gets any warmer, he'll burst into flames. Go for it. All right, listeners. This concludes Chapter 7 of Like, Common, and Romance. Chapter 8 will be next. I loved certain parts of this chapter. It is a long one, but I'm glad they finally got some certain conversations out of the way. Todoroki flirting with Deku was amazing to me. Hope you all enjoyed it as well. Let me know your thoughts and reactions, though. And as always, thank you so much for listening.